What happens to a person who dies without Christ? What is your take on eternal punishment, annihilation, etc.? How does the resurrection of the un- unjust fit into this? Well, I mean, you know, if, if Adam and Eve, again, I, I do believe they did have, they had conditional immortality. In other words, if they wouldn't have sinned and they perpetually abide in the presence of God, essentially God's house, so to speak, Eden, they would have kept on living. Okay, so I, I would say it's conditional immortality. You know, everybody has, if we, if we want to reverse the language, everybody's mortal. You know, they're going to they're gonna die of something. So, I mean, if they're kicked out of the garden, and really the rest of humanity sort of follows this template that we aren't born into the presence of God, uh, we are, you know, have to be brought back into relationship with God. That's just another way of saying salvation is needed. Um, so that is, you know, kind of the one thing that to me just seems the, you know, the most obvious if we're, if we're going back to this, to the Edenic scene and then thinking about it theologically, uh, what happens to a person who, who dies without Christ? Well, they, they have a Christless eternity. They, they spend eternity outside the presence of God, the family of God. They, to use other, you know, scriptural language, they're lost, uh, that, that sort of thing. Uh, that naturally takes us into where the questioner, you know, took us. You know, what what's your take on eternal conscious punishment or annihilation, so on and so forth. I, I think for me, both of those things are actually still on the table. And I, I've said before on the podcast that you know it really depends on how you read certain language, uh, especially in the Book of Revelation when it describes you know final judgment. So when when I look at it, the the, the thing that really puts annihilation on the table for me is the the reference to the death of death both in in revelation and also one place in in first corinthians you know if 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 death itself is truly destroyed and that is that is what you actually read you know in the book of revelation then i don't know how death could be eternally ongoing it's either destroyed or it's not and so annihilation seems to make a lot of sense in respect to that verse. And of course, if, if you have annihilation, that's permanent. So the judgment is permanent. The separation is permanent. The, uh, does it have to be conscious, you know, is, is really the question for some people. And, and some will take like Revelation 14, 11, the, the smoke of their torment descends forever and ever. Well, if, if they were destroyed, again, the results of that are permanent too. And the smoke could just be a reference to the fact that they had been destroyed. They had been consumed and annihilated in the flame. So the, the, the language of going up forever and ever just doesn't really help resolve the debate. That's part of why there is a debate. So I think for me, both of those things are on the table. I, again, I, if push came to shove, I think annihilation makes the best sense, but it's certainly not the only view that you could come out of that passage, you know, and at least one other with. Again, I, it, it's hard for me to see how death itself could be destroyed and yet be ongoing in an eternal way. That, that th- Those two things just don't seem to go together. But again, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not willing to, you know, to sort of push the more traditional view to the side. But I think an, annihilation really needs serious consideration. Like I said, for me, they're both on the table. 